As many of you may know, I am on this wonderful journey of building my own tiny house. One of the reasons I decided to build my own tiny house was because if I had someone else, like a professional builder, build my tiny house to the specs and designs that I wanted, it would have cost at least 150K. So when I broke it down, I learned I could build it for half of that. And yes, it would take way longer, but I was up for the challenge and I wanted to do it. Let's break this down and see how I'm making this dream a reality. I really hope that me sharing my story and my journey with you can help motivate and inspire your own financial journeys or if you're just interested in the process of how do you fund a house or how do you pay for something as you go and kind of what are some of the tips and techniques that you may be able to bring into your own life. Like everything else in my life, the first step to this is having clear goals and intentions. Before I had actually decided to build my own tiny house, I had done a ton of research, which you can check out in another video of mine, about designing the home and what aspects of the home would need to be built and that highly uh, influences the cost of the build. After I dove into all the aspects that make up a house really not just a tiny house um, so including frame the foundation insulation windows sheathing interior siding exterior siding um, did I say windows <laughs> there's flooring all of the appliances all of these bigger ticket items that I knew I had to save for so I created a spreadsheet and for every category I started figuring out okay how much does a tiny house trailer cost how much does the framing cost? How much insulation will I need? How much does it cost? And with this, I just use Home Depot. They have good calculating estimate tools, as well as reaching out to trailer companies to figure out how much a trailer would be. I can't stress enough how important budgeting and the act of budgeting has been for me during this process. I personally use You Need a Budget or YNAB. It's an app that you can use that does like digital envelope stuffing. I highly recommend YNAB. It's been great. It allows me to categorize every little thing I wanted to save for, and it allows me to appoint every single dollar a job. And that is the real key and huge shift in my budgeting journey is give every dollar a job, like a specific job. It can't just sit for like, maybe one day I'll need that dollar. No, it has a job. Um, is it gonna be for my emergency savings? Is it gonna be a savings for a specific thing? If you're new to budgeting, highly recommend YNAB, but if you've never done a budgeting program before, I highly recommend The Budget Mom. She basically teaches the foundations that I use. She uses cash and like pen and paper to do a lot of her tracking and organizing of money. I use the same principles she does, I just use YNAB as a digital way of stuffing envelopes. So what I first did was I set up all of these categories as savings goals in YNAB and I got to see a picture of, okay, for each of these different milestones, this is how much money I'm gonna need before I can start. And I took a long, hard look at my already current budget of how much bills did I have to cover, um, what were my monthly expenses that were more variable like groceries, dining out, miscellaneous, house stuff, etc. And was there any kind of lifestyle changes I needed to make to be able to save for the tiny house? Ultimately, I didn't make too many lifestyle decisions. I have that privilege and upper hand there. I am a single female who works in tech. I am very comfortable. I am very fortunate for that. Other than maybe being more mindful at the grocery store, more for my health than for saving money, those things just kind of go hand in hand. I have been lucky enough to do that. However, to save up at the pace I needed for doing the job and not this being a five-year project was finding other income streams. So I do freelance transcription on the side. This is great because it allows me to work hours outside of a traditional nine to five, which was my main salary work. I also did some technical writer contract work, again, outside of my core hours. So I was able to make some money there. 
a house and pet sit for some friends and that is one other way to trade my time for money. I've also been selling some of my stuff on Facebook Marketplace, garage sales, and eBay because I'm gonna have to downsize anyway and I also am kind of starting that journey early as well. So it's not a huge lifestyle shock when I move from 15, 1600 square feet to 320 square feet. I can do another video on how I decide whether to do something on eBay, Facebook Marketplace, or garage sales, uh, if that's of interest to anyone. I'm also very intentional with money that comes from those places, goes into the categories that are related to the tiny house, because that's why I'm doing those extra little jobs. Putting in the effort to do those things is to fund the tiny house. So another piece of this is more psychological than actual, but it is patience and flexibility. Faster. Patience is a virtue. One thing that's really hard to kind of hit is that immediate dopamine hit of getting something new and shiny immediately or patiently waiting until you can responsibly afford it and then buying it and then utilizing it. It is hard. There is no denying it. The beauty of not going into debt and doing the build on my own is that me building my tiny house is taking a lot longer than professional construction folks to do it. <laughs> so the time it takes to save up the money is natural with the build pace that I'm going at. And so having that patience that this is not gonna be tomorrow's house that I'm gonna be living in, it's next year's house that I'm gonna be living in, has been ingrained in my brain. And I'm very grateful for the help I'm getting along with this build and the and all of the things that I'm learning as I do this. I'm also saving money by doing a ton of research. I'm watching YouTube videos that me three years ago would never think I would ever watch. It's a lot of, you know, construction workers replacing windows, a lot of this old house videos, a lot of like how to caulk your metal siding, how to install a metal roof, how to frame a house. I have a Habitat for Humanity book about how to build a house and it has been a fulfilling journey so far, even though I'm not even done or halfway done with my tiny house build because I am constantly learning something new. Building the tiny house has been a huge hobby that I wasn't really expecting to be this kind of hobby and really understanding how systems in your house works and how things are put together. I am a hands-on person, so this has been something that has been really fulfilling to that learning side of me. And I think that is worth more than its weight in gold in the sense that I don't have to go take a workshop or a class of how to frame a house. I'm just doing it. I'm learning how to do it. I'm asking friends for help and I'm doing it. And it is, I feel like a different human now. It's mind blowing. So that has been a really great trade off, I think. So a couple things I've also been doing to help with the expenses of the tiny home is one, I got a Home Depot credit card. I don't really want to push people getting car uh, store credit cards because I think it's that's a slippery slope, especially if you're really bad with credit cards. But the Home Depot credit card specifically gives me some perks in multi-month financing. And more importantly, uh, they keep sending me 10% coupons, which for something small, it's $20, it's just like two bucks. But for something large, that's $1,000, it's a hundred bucks. And so over time, and because I've been going so much, these little perks have been super helpful. I've also signed up for a Home Depot Pro X account, and this was really helpful when I was ordering my windows. I was able to get a better discount than if I was just a normal consumer. And then also the perks for that is, even though I'm not a professional construction person, I'm not buying in bulk as much as professional companies are who will really be maximizing the benefits of the pro account, I'm still getting small incentives to do so. And that has saved up money over the year to really put towards the tiny house in ways that I wouldn't have had otherwise. Building a tiny house while staying debt free is not always easy. 
but it has been incredibly rewarding and I have enjoyed this process so much and it is stretching some ideas of mind about, you know, who I am as a person um, who has no build experience. Why would I have the audacity to build my own home and put money in it this way? And I'm just learning so much about myself and about what I find important. And I think where you put your money is often showing what your values are. Please subscribe to this channel if you enjoyed this video. I have a fun video about how I bought my Tesla all in cash. And I'm also always posting updates about how the tiny house build is going. I would love to see you there along my journeys. And until next time, bye.